Hello and welcome to ADTV and today you catch up with us on probably one of the most peaceful and scenic venues that we have had the pleasure to get out with the cameras on. You may have already seen a video here at Rocks and Broad. A few hundred yards behind me we actually done a bank fishing video and the purpose of this video and the last video is to basically highlight to thousands of people who are coming here on holiday every single year how good the fishing can be. So a little bit about the broads themselves. So this is actually rocks and broad. It's a tidal broad, but there is no flow here. And this actually is a day ticket. You can get it from the yacht club, but mostly a general rule of thumb for the broads. As long as it doesn't say private fishing or no fishing, a big percentage of it is actually free fishing. So it's an unbelievable water system with some really good fishing available as well. Not only the predator fishing in the winter, but perhaps what we target today, more of the core species can be really good as well. So. What we've done today is we've decided to come out into a boat because it's pretty much so many people who are coming on holiday are getting a boat out and they have a go at fishing. So hopefully these tips will help you. Now I have got a confession to make. I am absolutely useless on a boat. So Phil Gray, who's actually the manager of our Roxham shop, has kindly offered to skipper us today. To say he knows a little bit about the broads is an understatement. So if you are here this way, pop into Roxham store and he should be able to put you on a few fish. But he's put us down... This end of rocks and broad with the wind coming down, he's found us a few fish and already we've had a couple of fish on camera. So it's got the potential to be a real good day. So let's have a look at the fishing side of it and getting down to it. So for me personally, if I was fishing from a boat, the easiest way and probably how everyone starts getting into fishing is float fishing or waggler fishing. So that's exactly what I'm doing today. So we'll talk you through the setup. So initially I've just got a crystal waggler, which is a clear waggler, which runs in between two float stops and that is locked at the depth of the broad itself. So I've plumbed the depth to make sure I'm fishing on the bottom and then that is set at that correct depth. And then underneath that we've got three droppers and one real small dropper near the hook as well. And I've cut that all down towards the hook end to get one, the bait down to the bottom and to stop any toe interfering with your bait. And then on there, a size 14 hook should be absolutely fine for anything you're likely to catch. So then that brings us on to sort of how you fish it and the last thing, perhaps bait. So one quite important thing and one thing we've done this morning is we've dropped the H block marker out. So if you haven't seen a H block marker before, it's basically sort of a, uh, says in its name, a H sort of float shape, which line wraps around the middle of it with a weight on it. So as you sort of drop it in the water, it spins around and lets the line out and then the H block sits on top of the water. So you know exactly where you're fishing. Obviously you can go and retrieve that at the end of your session. But what that's important for is because as you drift in the wind within your boat, whether you're on a cruiser moored up or a fishing boat like this, you'd be surprised at how much you move and that just gives you a visual reference point to where you're fishing. So I'll talk a little bit about baits. So we've got the Rocks and River Mix, this is from the ground bait that sells in the shop. Two kilos of ground bait for five pounds, it really is not expensive. We've got some corn, a few maggots and some casters and that's enough for a day's fishing. So to kick the session off, we got sort of six or seven balls together balled that ground back around the H block marker which has got corn, some maggots and casting with it and then in the water when we're mixing it up we put some molasses in it as well which is another sort of relatively cheap additive just a bit more pulling power into it. So actually fishing wise it's not that complicated it's just sort of being accurate and this is a real hungry river system so get some bait in keep plopping in sort of golf ball size balls of ground back over your float every sort of six or seven casts and you should keep fish coming all day so if you are coming out to the broads first of all i hope you have a real good holiday and second of all if you try some fishing i'm sure you won't be let down Well there we have it, what a brilliant way to end the morning's fishing on the broads. Fishing like this keeps us coming back year after year and you really can see why. I've had loads of smaller fish, loads of roach, loads of skimmers. We kept a few bigger bream back but it is hot today, we're not going to keep them in the net long so we're going to head off, we'll show you the last few but certainly get yourself down to the broads and get on some of the best fishing in the country.